Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of my York City FIFA 13 career. It was um, a comment in the last episode, I think it was, to have a look at the um, transfer negotiations and find out what uh, Tom Owen Yela rejected the contract um, or the offer that came in. And I didn't really see why he rejected it, but someone suggested to have a look in the unsuccessful negotiations. So here we go, we can see, it was, I believe it was due to wage. You can see there he's been. He's on £500 a week and he was offered 750 a week for four years, so it's a bit strange why he rejected the, the offer from Carlisle. But hopefully someone else comes back in for him. A few, game, a few days actually until our next game. We'll see how many games we can get done in this episode. I'm potentially thinking we may just get the one against Arsenal done as um, obviously it's a transfer window so it's going to be... Um, a little bit difficult going through and getting a few games done obviously we keep on getting stopped and um, information about players and also I say I want to try and bring some players in so it's going to be a lot of negotiations in between um, games so we may only get the one game done in this episode which is against Arsenal who are one place below us in the league one point below us so a vital game but moving slowly along with this schedule Hopefully we hear back from one of our transfer requests or transfer negotiations, but we have some scouting updates. So here we go. Let's have a look at these. Uh, Danny Medeiros, 87 max. We'll keep an eye on you. 71 max. We will get rid of you. 85. Uh, reject you. 93 for Pateria. Although we don't know where you can play yet, so we'll keep scouting you. Okay. And here we go, another report. 84 max, we'll keep our eye on you. 94, well, we'll sign you up. 86, we'll keep our eye on you. Thank you very much. Right, let's carry on, move the schedule on a bit. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, the board player, the board fans, media are all expecting us to bring in a, uh, a high quality. Defender, so that I think is where we need to, to look to strengthen our squad. Um, a few players who I'm interested in, obviously, the they were mentioned in the last episode. We have a transfer offer for Gabriel Valverde. Finally, West Ham coming with an offer. I accept that. I just want him off the books. It's 825,000 in our pocket, which may cover someone's wage for a couple of months. Um, Right, transfers, view shortlist. So we have Bad Stuber, who only has 70 sprint speed. As much as I love to bring him in, I'm actually going to say no, because and I'm going to get rid of him, because he's only got the 70 sprint speed and 63 acceleration. He's 29 and rated 85. I'm going to remove him, as I think we can get better in. This guy, uh, Chris Dematras. Let me see, 87 sprint speed, 81 acceleration, uh, 90 heading accuracy, 91 marking, 89 stand tackle, 87 sliding tackle. He would be amazing to bring him. So as this guy, Albert Masai, not so good with the uh, physical stats, but his stand tackle of 80 of 95 actually, sorry, is, is amazing. 96 marking and 89 sliding tackle. Nastasic will be another one. Um, same as Dimatra, same as Massey, sorry, uh, in terms of marking, standing, tackle, and sliding tackle, all high. His physical aren't that great. Uh, Del Fabro is one to reject. Uh, he's only 76 rated and he's 23. So I'm going to remove him from the shortlist. Kurt Zuma is a player I'd love to bring in. So I'll tell you what, we'll inquire, see how much St. Etienne want. We may have to pay 13, 14 million for him. But he does look as though he is going to improve in the future. So we'll have to see what we uh, what we want to see. The other player I'd love to bring in is um, Coutinho, who has amazing physical stats. But he's uh, valued at 18.5 million. He's in the final year of his contract. So we may be able to pick him up for 13. But I do think I need to bring in a, uh, a defender. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at buying players. And I'm going to look at... Um, Potentially a new left back or a new right back. Going to see what's available, but I want someone who is minimum rated of 85. 
I don't want anyone that's going to just be a squad player. We now want people that are going to be genuine first team players. They're going to be players who are in the squad for a long time. They are one of the first names on the team sheet. And there's no one, no left back with a minimum attribute of 85. We'll try right back. See who, if anyone, is available. Obviously, I've not put any parameters in for wage or value. So we're just going to see who it comes back with. It's strange how left back came with no one. Okay, right back's come back with no one. I'm just going to make sure. Yeah, I've done no searches today, so yeah, it shouldn't be coming back with anything. Right, drop it down to 80 there, and we'll see what it comes back with. Um, we'll have to see. Um, hey, for someone young, 20, then we may see if we can bring them in. Mika Richards, Kyle Walker, Danilo, Klein. All these players are 27, 28. I could really do something for the price and what we're going to pay. That's probably a Quetta could be one. Um, reactions 87, standing tackle 85, shot pass 84, acceleration 83. Approach to buy. Two years, six months left. But I've already got these sort of players in, so if I want some, I'm going to have to get someone young. Maybe it's this uh, Barbosa. Um, other than that, yeah, we're going to have to start looking. We are going to look at, have to look at Klein or Kyle Walker. See, 93 sprint speed. Kyle Walker will be an amazing player to bring in. Oh, remember to get him on the cheap. Um, if we offer five, he's on 60 grand a week. You know what? Yeah, good right back. He's got decent sprint speed to get forward. Right, and now. We'll do the same with left back and sprint speed. We want that to be 85 minimum, I'd say. And we'll see who, if anyone, is available. Hopefully, there's a couple. I know Ibrahim Mbe is potentially one. Um, he is on my short list. I think he uh, is in the last year of his contract, but I'm not too sure what his sprint speed is. Okay, so we've got Jordi Alba, uh, David Alaba. Jetro Willems, Ibrahim Mbe. Okay, we'll have a look down these and see who, if anyone's contract is running out in the next few months. Jordi Alba, no. David Alaba, yes. So we may be able to pick him up on the cheap. Right. We'll go three and a half million. See what uh, Bayern say to that. Uh, Jetro Willems. I recently arrived from Fulham for the year, so we're not going to get him. Ibrahim Mbe, I'm sure he is um, almost out of contract. Yeah, we, we may be able to bring him in. I may try to look, may look to do a swap deal. It's a left back, because I'm sure D'Souza Silva isn't that good going forward. The other one's potentially Jack Robinson from Liverpool. He's rated 80. Approach to buy. He's still got a fairly... And a long time on his contract, but wow, 80, uh, 92 sprint speed, 97 balance. I'll inquire about Jack Robinson, he could be an interesting one to bring in. Right, let's ironically have a look, see if there's any central defenders who have good sprint speed. There may, these may be few and far between, we have to pay some, may pay a bit extra. In fact, we do have Medeiros and Lazarevich and Perez Alonso at the back, so we aren't that bad. Oh, it's this guy again, Demetrius. Approach to buy. They're going to want a lot, so I wonder if we can offer them here. I'll tell you what, no. We'll just offer the 14. They'll probably come back and say no. And then we can potentially lower it and offer them a player. But at least we've made some offers, so we're just going to see if any come back. Maybe the wingers is the ideal thing to do. Jack Robinson, 3.5. Or 3.9, sorry. Kurt Zuma. Contributor bid 4.8 for Kurt Zuma. Holy shit. Yep, we'll offer you 4.8. You'll probably come back and say no. 4.8 for, for Kurt Zuma and 3.9 for Jack Robinson. And we've been given 625,000 for the sale of Valverde. Right, so we've got to remember, in fact, I'm going to write that down 3.9 JR, so I know who it is. 
Okay, right, let's check this team out. And while I'm in there, I'm going to check what Perez Alonso's uh, sprint speed is. Oh, sorry, not Perez Alonso, Zuzo. Yeah, Zuzo sprint speed 93. Uh, De Chilio sprint speed 90, acceleration 82. Fabino has acceleration of 78, sprint speed of 91, so they aren't that bad. Form is looking pretty good for everyone. Muriel and Welbeck will keep them. Yeah, Perez Alonso will bring Tiago Medeiros in, who isn't. Actually, let's go back and have a look. Uh, sprint speed 66 for Meyer and Medeiros. Alonso sprint speed 84, strength 90. Sod it, I'm sticking with Perez Alonso in there. Lazarevic has uh, sprint speed 81, strength 98. Look at that, that is amazing. Hmm, right. So I'm wondering actually, why are people saying I need to bring in someone in defence? Because our defence is pretty good. But we'll get this game against Arsenal done. Hopefully it can be a victory. Yeah, no kick clashes there, we're okay. Okay, so who do Arsenal have? They have. Sigurdsson, Tadic, Santi, Wiltshire, Ramsey, Gibbs, Grzelny, Vermaelen, Chesney, Jovino, Podolski, Fabianski, Frimpong. Wow, they beat Reading 6-0 in their last game, but they've lost two to Man City and Wigan. Benneke Fobi out injured. Right, let's have one go at this to get through it. Fantastic. So guys, the older Premier League and managerial merigo round has uh, taken another twist today with um, uh, Roberto Martinez resigning as Wigan manager and has reportedly been allowed to uh, to speak to Everton that's um it's a I think it's a good move by Everton considering some of the names that were getting hand uh, getting thrown around um, was it um, David Weir Alan Stubbs were a couple of names who were were, were mentioned that I just feel they've not proved themselves really whereas um, Di Matteo would have been another one um, obviously the Mark Hughes saga and Mark Hughes situation at Stoke is is an interesting one That's not the best cross. I'm not too sure you th uh, you think that that um, that managerial signing for for Stoke would be a good move. He he would fit the bill for Stoke. He's um, he, it, the team wouldn't require too much rebuilding. I don't think he'd use the current squad that's available at Stoke. He'd he'd may bring in one or two players, but. If Stoke went with another manager, say a Gus Poyet, a Roberto Martinez, a Di Matteo, maybe um, I stop saying um, I keep on doing it. Maybe Stoke, if they went with someone like Di Matteo, Martinez, uh, who was the other guy I mentioned? Gus Poyet. Then there'd have to be a potentially a, a huge squad overhaul and a lot of money invested. As those type of players, as the type of squad that Stoke have, don't play in the style of play that Di Matteo, Martinez, and um, uh, Poye. Um, so sure, oh, that should have been a goal. Yeah, those uh, those managers won't fit the the players that Stoke have, so it'd have to be a complete overhaul to get the the passing type of players in that Stoke would want for those managers. Whereas Hughes, you think could make something out of the team with those players he's used that sort of style that Stoke have maybe not as brute, much brute force as potentially Stoke do use at this moment in time so yeah you can, I can definitely see Stoke, uh, Stoke and Hughes being a good fit the other one obviously um, Martinez to, to Everton is more intriguing as you wonder you wonder whether Everton fans would want someone not necessarily more successful but more proven in the Premier League someone with a bit more or not necessarily in the Premier League but with a bit more experience is that offside is that a penalty that's offside um, you're someone with a bit more experience 
uh, not necessarily in the Premier League, maybe um, a European manager, but someone who has the, uh, I don't want to say, someone sort of that's managed at a higher level with a big club, and that's no disrespect to Roberto Martinez, but you look at Wigan and they've struggled and you don't know if that's down to the money they've had available or lack of funds they've had available, if it's down to the coaching style, what you don't know what it's down to, but if I was an Everton fan, I'd be slightly concerned with who is taking over from their club and where he's to the teams he's managed in the Premier League and where they've been, the fact that they got relegated this season and they've always been nervous, it's, they've always required a magic trick for the last five, ten games to get out of trouble and they've never been in a position where they can have um, safety sort of guaranteed and be looking at a top ten finish in the Premier League. They've never had that sort of real stability of Wigan and you wonder whether um, Martinez, what he's going to do at at Everton, you want him. Granted, he, he may be an absolute success, and I've, 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 I think, I think he's got, he's, he's not going to do any harm. But you wonder how much success he can bring to Everton with his tactical knowledge, his ability. Because surely he at Wigan has to take some of the blame for how the team has played and how they've ended up in the position. Oh beautiful goal. Danny Welbeck. Um yeah but how you have to say Martinez has to take some of the blame for how and where the team has finished each season. He's it was each season they've been in the Premier League. They've like I said they've struggled and he's about he's had money available, granted it may not be as much as he has at Everton and he's not had the players. But in the future I don't think they're going to fall by the wayside they're definitely still going to be a top 10 finish but you wonder whether the right man in charge at Everton someone with a, say a bit more European experience a bit more experience at top level football with continental other continental teams or someone just, just a, a manager with continental experience I hate to say it but someone like um, um, what am I thinking of? Steve McLaren. Yes, he he bombed when he was in in the in England before, but he's managed abroad, and you wonder whether he has that quality that could do Everton some good. He's got that international and continental quality of management that that would take Everton to the next step. So it, it's. It's an interesting one. Should Martinez get the job, you, you'd assume that with um, him asking to or resigning from Wigan and Everton being given permission to speak to him, that he is their number one target. And you just wonder whether how uh, how much input David Moyes has had on it. It's whether he has. I know he he did say he he would offer should the board uh, want any input. Then he would give uh, input in terms of who they should uh, appoint as the new manager. Substitution for Arsenal there. Team trailing, you can understand why he's going to make it. Thank you. Someone finally made a move. Oh, in goes the cross. The defending here was top class. Oh dear. Right. At least we're winning this game, so we uh, we can't afford to. Gear to give a silly goal away. We need to be on top of our game defensive wise. So I may bring Lewis Gadan on for his defensive qualities. It's a poor clearance. I should have booted that clear. But yeah, you, it's a, it's going to be interesting. I'll give uh, Martin as a season and see how he gets on. If Everton struggle to finish in the top ten, depending on what happens squad wise, because a lot of a lot of what goes on could uh, depend on what squad they have available um, 
if players like I'll make a substitution or two um for yeah play uh, talking about transfer yeah transfers for Everton if players like uh, Fellaini obviously is one that's been touted up as potentially leaving to go to Man United if they lose some other stars potentially Kevin Morales has been good for them there's also who who else Leighton Baines is potentially one that could could leave uh, Phil Jagielka has been a rock at the back for them How it depends on how much of this current squad uh, M uh, Martinez, if he gets a job, or whichever the new manager is, actually does get to use and to to work with. It's it's going to definitely be 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 interesting to see how the the new manager uses the current squad and whatever funds he has available, and seeing how he progresses the team and where they finish next season. You hope. The players would play for the new managers as they played for Moyes. They they shouldn't have any reason not to. Go on, fella, you threw. Oh. Keep the pressure on. So yeah, it's it's, it's going to be an interesting one. There's still a few other jobs that are to be decided, but I am intrigued as to how Everton get on next season. Obviously now this. Uh, this brings around um, the Wigan vacancy and you wonder who would go there whether there would be um, who would it be potentially Gus Poy obviously is on currently on gardening leave with I think it's classed as gardening leave uh, with um, Brighton whether he's the sort of man to, to lead to, to lead Wigan um, given a bit more money Given a bit more, I don't see. I've not really seen much of Brighton's play so this season, so I don't know if their squad is better than 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 Wigan's. Um, you wonder, obviously, with Wigan going down, how many of their stars are going to be kept? Uh, Callum McManaman, Aruna Kone, whether they're going to find homes at other Premier League sides. Callum McManaman, you'd surely you'd be one that would would be a good fit for. A Sunderland and Newcastle, you could see him potentially going to a Spurs and Everton, even going to to Liverpool. To with that, that you could definitely see him at a top ten Premier League side. Maybe not a top four, but definitely a top ten Premier League side. Um, then again, he could also someone like um, Swansea or Norwich, that sort of team. You could see him there. Maybe one of the new promoted sides uh, look to try and pick him up. So there's a few interesting things. Obviously, the, whoever takes the Wigan job may and uh, will have a lot on their hands and go think about what they want to do in terms of European football. Do they want to try and just not do anything with it, or do they want to try and bring in? Are they, are they going to be told we want to have a good, a good cup run and we want to see if we can go far in the cup, and then if, especially the Euro League and see if they can bring in some money into the team and into the into the club but there's like there's still a long way to go obviously the, the last football season has just ended as our game ends 1-0 against Arsenal great result clean sheet more importantly so yeah our um our games ended and the season's only just ended so there's a still a lot to be decided especially in terms of transfers Players coming in to clubs, players leaving clubs, and managers coming in. It's going to be a fun summer, and there's a couple of uh, tournaments coming up. I think there's a Confederations Cup. There's the Under-21 Euro Championships as well. Here we go. Other clubs showing an interest in Kyle Walker. Spurs transfer offer unacceptable. Nine million for Kyle Walker. He's valued at eight in the final year of his contract. One. Cardiff Tottenham Hotspur. One. Liverpool, one. I'll go to six million. Two. Newcastle United, three. Southampton, one. Bayern, Daniel Alaba, he's too valuable. Eintracht Frankfurt, too valuable. Okay, the important one was uh, York City, one. was uh, Kurt Zuma, wasn't it? St Etienne came back and said we could have him for a, a little bit. 
Okay, selective NASA transfer from acceptable. As Paul Jose Lemay returns from injury. 8.5 million on Kurt Zuma. I'll go to 6.8. As you said, I could have him on the cheap, which is one of the things I hate about this game. When you get an offer, when you put an inquiry and you get a sum back and then nothing happens. Transfer offers for Patrick Hoffler, Fraser Forster. I don't want to get these two mixed up. Arsenal want Patrick Hoffler on a season-long loan. All right, then. Yeah, yeah. Seems strange, but if he's going to get some Premier League football with Arsenal, that's great news. Sevilla want Fraser Forster. Reject that because I haven't got another keeper for now. And guys, I'll call it a day there. Didn't realise it's gone into 25 minutes. Play alone. Here we go. Patrick Hoffler. Wade has been covered. 2,800. So, yep, yeah, I'll call it a day there. Um, interesting to see we could go for Jack Robinson. Still waiting to hear back from Inter regarding Ibrahim Mbay. And we'll see what happens with um, St Etienne over Kurt Zuma. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you could give it a, th uh, a like, that would be great. It, it lets me know that I'm doing a good job and you guys are liking it. And thanks for watching. Cheers.